He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you bring when you stand before the King? Jesus is the only way. upon the water one sweet day. He healed the blind and lame, all glory to his name. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. The truth and the life I'm here to say. He gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the only way. He's the only way, folks. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the year, this is the year that he may appear, that he may appear. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the year that he may appear. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a year, this is a year that he may appear. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Oh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Let's lift up Jesus, let's lift up Jesus, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Let's lift him higher, let's lift him higher, lift him high for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like him. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like him. God is my Father, and Jesus is my brother. The blessed Holy Spirit is my guide. I'm of the new creation, the devil's no relation. I'm of that royal family in the sky. God is my Father, and Jesus is my brother. The blessed Holy Spirit is my guide. 
I'm of the new creation, the devil's no relation. I'm of that royal family in the sky. The lily of the valley. Jesus is described here uh, as the lily of the valley. Praise the Lord. I know that I can make it. Jesus put it in my will to reach the new Jerusalem. Each step is a thrill. Though the devil wars against me, each step that I climb, I see the light there in the distance. It's just a matter of time. I know that I can make it. Jesus put it in my will to reach the new Jerusalem. Each step is a thrill. Though the devil wars against me, each step that I climb, I see the light there in the distance. It's just a matter of time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine and let it shine. And let it shine in the darkest corner. I'm gonna let it shine in the darkest corner. I'm gonna let it shine in the darkest corner. I'm gonna let it shine and let it shine and let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine and let it shine and let it shine in the darkest corner I'm gonna let it shine in the darkest corner I'm gonna let it shine in the darkest corner I'm gonna let it shine let it shine and let it shine don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine and let it shine and let it shine. <clears throat> Our ruler once came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and light the master made answer in words true and plain ye must be born again ye must be born again ye must be born again, ye must be born again.
to me Dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day He's a wonderful Savior to me Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way He's a wonderful Savior to me Jesus took me in. He's the wonderful Savior to me. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll be there. Hallelujah, I'll be there. Hallelujah, meeting over there. And I'll shout hallelujah when I see my Savior there. In the hallelujah meeting over there. I'll be there, hallelujah, I'll be there In the hallelujah meeting over there And I'll shout hallelujah when I see my Savior there In the hallelujah meeting over there Oh yes, I'll be there, hallelujah, I'll be there In that hallelujah meeting over there Shout hallelujah when I see my Savior there In that hallelujah meeting over there Oh yes, I'll be there Hallelujah, I'll be there In that hallelujah meeting over there And I'll shout hallelujah when I see my Savior there In that hallelujah meeting over there Praise the Lord. Let's you, Lord, this day for your blessings. And Lord, help us, Lord, that we might do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Watch over us and our children, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we might uh, be able to steer and minister to them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's open up our Bibles this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. And we just sang that song, Oh, yes, I'll be there. Hallelujah, I'll be there. In that hallelujah meeting over there. And uh, we have in chapter 15, the discussion starts out Paul's hope for a future life. And we're going to take this down to the middle of the chapter. Uh, in verse uh, 26, it says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he hath said all things are under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else uh, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of man I have fought with the beasts of Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. I'm going to stop right there a minute. Let's look at these verses. What is the argument that Paul is making here? Well, he is trying to tell us about the hope, his hope in the future of having a life after we leave this life. Death seems to put an end to all things. All life dies, all animal life, all plant life, all human life eventually they die. Man, the Bible says that man is as the grass of the field and the flower that fadeth. Here today, gone tomorrow. That is our life. That's our lot in life. And we are, we are, we are picked over here. God somehow 
created us and put us into this life and we didn't we had nothing to say about it we couldn't say oh don't put me don't make me a human being don't put me in this life no here we are god put us in this life for a reason and uh we start out like a little baby you know and we grow up our teen years and so on and then we become adults and some of us and uh then we grow up and we <laughs> we begin to uh mature more and more and then eventually we get the white hair grays and then and then uh, we pass away that's what life is all about and if that's all there was in life look what uh, Paul says up earlier in verse 19 he says if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of men most miserable what a miserable life this would be without the hope of a hereafter uh, uh, Paul's statement here is if all I had to live for was the things of this life even being in Christ and saying I'm a Christian and I'm going to live a Christian moral life and I'm going to display the things of God in my life and I'm going to live a good Christian life if that's all there was to life if that was it and then we die and that's the end what a miserable lot in life that we have because there's no hope and no future. But the Apostle Paul here, as we read down, he believed in a hope of a future life. Here he says, why would I struggle and fight with the beasts of Ephesus? What advantage is it in me if the dead rise not? In other words, if, why should I struggle in this life and why should I strive against men that or want to uh, uh, contradict the word of God and they don't want to live a Christian life and they want to live an immoral life? And we live in a society today where immorality is rampant. And we see, we sometimes cannot hardly believe our ears of some of the evils that we hear of in this life. Uh, just, I think it was just a few years ago there was a, a thing on the news about San Francisco that the uh, McDonald's or the Burger Kings over there, that they had to put a sign in the window, please put your clothes on when you come into the restaurant because you're embarrassing people who have little children. And so you have travelers who are traveling through San Francisco. They stop at a, a McDonald's and the residents of the city dress nakedly, go through the streets naked, and they come into McDonald's to buy something, and they come in naked. Never mind, no shoes, no shirt, no service. They don't have nothing on, all right? So McDonald's must have got so many complaints that the, the, they put signs in the windows, please put your clothes on when you come in for service. So how wicked could things get when people have no morals and our world is getting so immoral and so on and so forth. And we could look at every corner. There are just things that are just unbelievable that men do the imaginations of their heart as it was in the days of Noah, it seems, that we have men today who are doing those things. Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, that what was it about the days of Noah? wickedness rampant wickedness i'm going to do whatever my mind tells me whatever i feel like i'm going to do that's what i'm going to do and that's what we have today and we struggle against that we uh, 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 resist those things even in our own flesh and we say no i'm not going to live like that i'm not going to do that why because we have a hope we have a hope beyond the grave the, but, uh, that's what paul was saying why should I struggle against these things? Why not, as he says here, if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Let's enjoy life. Let's do what everybody else is doing. Let's have a good time. But we cannot do that because we know that there is a God. And we know that there is the word of God says that one day that Jesus will come back. He will return. And he'll render to each man according to the deeds done in the body. It's not so much that we're afraid of hell. 
as we are that we fear God and that we respect his word. Be not deceived. Verse 33 says, be not deceived. Uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You hang around with devils. You hang around with uh, evil people. You're going to begin to get bad manners. You begin to take their manners. I, I say, you know, uh, I find in this life that there are those who are what I call rogues. Is that the right word? Rogue? A rogue? You know, in other words, bad mannered, uh, uh, acts uh, foolishly, does things that, uh, in other words, he has no good, he or she, they have no good manners at all. They are disrespectful to authority, disrespectful to those who uh, uh, are over them, their parents, their neighbors, rogues. But don't be deceived, it says. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You want to hang around with people? Find someone better than yourself to hang around with. <laughs> It'll improve your lot. They can show you something or give you something. If you hang around with, with base people, you're going to become base. All right? You become base. Verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Awake to righteousness, right standing with God. Awake to that. Live in that. The reason, the reason is that Jesus is coming back. We live in this life and we get so caught up in the things of this life, but in the back of our head we know that Jesus is coming back again. 35, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that the body that shall be, but bearest grain, that it may uh, chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, and another flesh of beasts, and another of fish, and another of birds. There are celestial bodies and bodies of terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from the other star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Let me stop there a second and catch up with some of this. Here we see that the flesh, we live in this flesh, and it's hard for us to imagine uh, uh, having a different kind of a body and, and living a different kind of a life when Christ comes back. And here Paul uh, uh, gives us uh, uh, several allegories or ideas uh, that about these things. You take a little seed like this and you plant it into the ground. And uh, in that seed, it seems like a dry little seed. It's nothing. You put it in the ground and it becomes like a little oak plant, the little oak uh, acorn. You plant it, it becomes a mighty oak tree. It's not the same thing that you planted in the ground, this mighty oak tree, right? So we live this life, we're in the flesh, we live in this flesh, and it says we're sown in corruption. In other words, the body dies, it goes back to the dust, it, it seems like that's the end. We bury the body, the bear, it goes back to the dust. 
But one day, Christ is going to, we're going to read it here, but one day, Christ is going to come back and he's going to take that seed that was buried and he's going to raise up a body from that, a different kind of a body, a spiritual body. And here we see that the, the here uh, Paul says that the, the sun has one glory, the moon has another glory, the stars have another glory. In other words, they have their own, they have their own thing, and we have in this life, you may have beauty of some sort, you may have some wisdom, you may have something, and you, oh, look at that, look at that person, look how smart they are, look how, how pretty they are, or beautiful, or handsome, or whatever. But all of that glory and all of the things of that flesh have nothing to do with the spiritual life. It's going to be something different. Okay, so that it's just as different as the sun and the moon. The sun comes out, it's a beautiful day, and the sun shines, and oh, what a wonderful thing. Look at the sun. And then the sun go, goes down at night, and up we see, oh, look at this. In its absence, we see the moon. And this moon has a different type of a light. It's a white or a yellowish ball in the sky. It has its own beauty. It cannot take from the sun, and the sun cannot take from that. It has a different beauty. And then as we sit out at night and we look up at the heavens and we see those stars, as beautiful as the moon and the sun are, look at those stars. Look at the beauty of those stars. They're so wonderful out there, you know, in, in their cluster together. What makes the, what is the difference of the beauty of the sun, which is a star, and the beauty of the stars? And when you think about it, what is Paul talking here? The sun is actually a star. That's all it is. But it's close to us, and it gives us this light, this beautiful light. But the stars, their beauty and their power is in the multitude of them. If there was one little star up in the sky, we look at it, oh, look at that poor little star. But we look at it, and we see the beauty is in the cluster and the magnitude and the, and the number of stars that we see. And one day, the Bible says we're going to be as the stars of heaven. We're going to be shining together. And we'll, we'll give our light as a sun, little suns, okay? Sown in a natural body, raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Verse 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made and a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that it was not the first which is spiritual, but after that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Are we of the second man or are we of the first man? We start out as being earthly of the first man. But we hope, we aspire, we want to be of the second man. We want to be of that spiritual man, okay, because it's everlasting. And it has a, its own beauty, a wonderful beauty. Verse 48, and as it is earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as it is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have bore the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We were like Adam. What is, the, what is it to bear the image of the earthly, the first one? The Bible says that Adam, in Adam was sin. And sin was transposed or brought down from one generation to another. Through all people, all men had sin. In their, that was a part of their nature. And so we start out like that. We start out with that, we start out with that earthly image of the earthly. And I say that we look at it, it says, and we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. One day when the Lord comes back and he opens the graves, that we shall be changed into the image of the heavenly. We will be like Christ. In other scripture, Paul says, it does not yet appear what we shall be like, but we know that when he shall appear, that we shall be like him. 
Verse 50, and I, I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So that we cannot, we, there must be, uh, something must transpire, something must happen, that we have got to be changed from living in this life and being earthly to living in the next life and being spiritual. You know, I say that, look it, the whole world is divided into two camps. One camp is those people who are earthly, who are the, what I would call the unsaved. And then we have a camp of Christians, a camp of Christians, and it doesn't have anything to do with denomination. It doesn't have anything to do with what church you go to or what church you don't go to. It has to do with your own individual relationship with God. And if you have a relationship with God and you really have a relationship with God, you are going to count his word as precious. You're going to be, you want to live according to his word. And if you're in a place where the people, uh, if you want to call it a church or a group or whatever you're in, and they are not following God's word, the Bible says to come out from among them, get away from them, and find yourself into a fellowship or into a place where they count God's word as precious. And the Bible says that all scripture is given as it is the inspiration of God, the word of God. And it's given for reproof and for correction and for doctrine. And so that we carry the word of God and we live by the word of God as much as we can. And we count the word of God as being inspired of God. This is the inspired word of God. All right, so now we come down to the meat and potatoes here of this uh, verse or of this chapter, I might say. Very, very important. Uh, this kind of co coordinates with a couple of other scriptures that Paul wrote. Paul wrote one in uh, 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4 where he describes the rapture or the taking away of God's, uh, of God's people out of this world. And we're going to read it here again. We read it here in 1 Corinthians in chapter 51. Now this also goes along with what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, where he begins to describe an event that will happen at the end of the age or, or at a, some time uh, uh, in the future where the Bible says that men would degrade themselves and they would become like in the days of Noah. Let me just read a little bit of that before we get into this in Matthew uh, chapter uh, 24 and verse uh, 36. Starting there it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In this particular scripture here, it's saying that as it was in the days of Noah, that one Statement says an awful lot. We look back in Genesis and we read that there was a wickedness on the earth and it says that whatever the imagination of their heart, men would do, the imagination of their heart. Does that sound like today? Sounds a little like today, doesn't it? You do whatever you want to do, okay? And then we come up to the uh, 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 verse 40 of that particular uh, scripture. And we get a, a more detailed uh, uh, picture of what's going to happen. It says, Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. 
So what is going to happen here? It says that this event that we are talking about, it, that Paul said was worthy of our uh, 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 hope or worthy of our living a life on this earth in the hope that this event was going to happen. And the detail is that not everyone will be taken at the time of this rapture or this taking away. Here, let's see what it says here. It says, uh, Two shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other shall be left. What does that mean? It means that you're going to be working with someone or you'll be driving in a car with someone or you'll be going somewhere or something and all of a sudden, one person is going to go out and you'll be left alone. You're going to be left all alone. So the warning here in verse 42, Watch therefore, for ye know not the hour your Lord doth come. So that's the warning. At the end of that chapter, it, it tells us a, a, a little uh, story about someone who was watching. I would say read this at home. Uh, verse, uh, ver, re, starting with 36, read down to the end of the chapter uh, of Matthew 24, 36 to 55, I think it is. Okay, so let's go back to 1 Corinthians now. And time is going right by and we want to get this in. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So that this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, here is the story of the uh, human flesh, which is capable of corruption. We get old, we get sick. If we uh, uh, are not careful, we bruise ourselves or we cut ourselves. And then when you die, the moment that you die, you begin to rot. Your body begins to go back to the earth, okay? There's no life in it. It goes back. That's corruption. That's the corruption that we're talking about. Uh, so here we, let's look at 51 again. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Verse 52, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For a trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And this is what we're talking about. The, the celestial body, the new body that God will give us. We won't need eyeglasses. You won't need a hearing aid. You won't have all these afflictions and problems that we have from being earthly. We will have a new body, a new life, and we will uh, uh, be brought up with the Lord. Now here's what's basically what the Bible is telling us. It says that at the sound of the last trump, and trumpets are going to sound in the last days, there's going to be some trumpets that are going to sound, and when these trumpets sound, there's going to be certain events that are going to happen on the earth. And the one last trumpet, one trumpet, and it will be so loud, it will wake the dead. You say, whoa, you're so, he's so loud, he's loud enough to wake the dead. You ever hear that phrase? Well, this trumpet will be so loud that it will be loud enough to wake the dead. And we'll be walking around in life, you know. We'll be walking around and we'll be doing our thing, whatever it might be. And then all of a sudden, off we might hear... Da, da, da. What was that? Da, 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 da. And a great event is going to take place. You know, there's people today who say, oh, I don't believe that kind of stuff. Just as in the days of Noah. Noah began to build the ark, and he was 120 years building the ark. And he had his three sons helping him, and probably had other people working with him, you know. 
and building this ark. And all the time he's building the ark, he's preaching. God is going to send a flood. God is going to wipe out all of the human race. I'm going to take this ark and I'm going to uh, uh, float upon the waters because God is going to save me. And they laughed him to scorn. They didn't believe him until the very day that Noah entered the ark and it, something happened that had never happened before. It began to rain. The Bible says it didn't rain in those days. But a heavy dew came down. There was a different kind of a life then at that time. And so what happened? What happened? It rained. Now those unbelievers, they began to beat on the door of the ark. They began to cry out to God. They began to holler, what, what, what happened? What, what is this? Maybe Noah was right. But it was too late because God had shut the door of the ark. And no one could enter the ark after that. And so what happened? The flood came. And all the people that had not believed, they were washed away in the flood. At the end of the age, there's going to be a trumpet sound. And at the sound of the trumpet, in the twinkling of an eye, it's not going to take six months or three days or a, a week. This is going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. Those that are in Christ are going to be changed or transformed. And those who do not believe in God, they're just going to continue to walk down the street. They're going to see all the things happening. Could you imagine if you live near the cemetery and the graves begin to open and you see these, those dressed in white linen being brought up into the heaven. Some people would say to me, oh, you're nuts, you're crazy. Well, maybe so. Maybe I'm a little crazy. Uh, but who knows? Who knows uh, if I'm crazy or not? But I'm going to study I'm going to stay in God's word, and I'm going to believe what God's word says, okay? And I have something else here, if I can find it. I had this little poem that I wrote, and I'm going to close with this poem again, because I believe that, that we are living in this age, and this message this morning, and we sang this little song. It came from uh, Pastor Din's church. It was his grandfather that wrote that song, uh, Oh, Yes, I'll Be There at that hallelujah meeting in the air. And I'll shout hallelujah when I see my Savior there in that hallelujah meeting over there. Well, I wrote this little poem. It says, Just Another Day. And this is about, this is a story, or a little poem about somebody who had been witness to, somebody who had heard about this vaguely, but put it out of his mind. And said, when that day event or event happens, then I'll be ready. But here's what happens. And this little poem is called Just Another Day. Today is just another day. The market's in a bustle. People rushing here and there. My, there's quite a hustle. Some are going to the church today. A marriage there, I think. All the pomp and famous ones are gathered for a drink. The sun is shining, not a cloud. Pleasant day, I'd say. Time to walk the dog around or take nine holes today. I heard that some are planning a weekend at the lake and the church on Genesee is planning for a bake. Oh, just around the corner, Christmas on the way, more shopping, singing, having fun. It's just another day. But there's something different in the air, a quiet sort of breeze. It says to watch and pray be ready, if you please. Then there's that strange small cloud rising from the east. Closer, closer comes the cloud upon these men who feast. And there it looks, oh no, I'm sure it cannot be. A man is standing in the clouds. What is this my eyes do see? And now I hear a blast so loud, I cover up my ears. That trumpet sound has touched my soul and brought my eyes to tears. A million angels suddenly appear and fill the morning sky. I beat my breast and cry aloud, and in my heart a heavy sigh. I see the graves are broken up and bodies coming out. They're going up and singing too, 
What is this all about? Some I know in less a time before my eye could twinkle are dressed in white and taken up. They have no spot or wrinkle. The sadness of the moment, I'm overcome with fear. The lamb has come and taken home the church he loves so dear. They told me to be ready. I thought I had some time to live my life and take a wife and even spend my dime. How foolish now it seems to me to miss this faithful call. For just a passing fancy, I'm sure I missed it all. Oh, how often did they beg me to ask the Savior in. But I would tell them later on, I'll repent of all my sin. And they would tell the story. He's coming back again, they'd say. But I didn't think that he would come on just another day. So that's what we're looking at, that one day is, this is going to happen. It's not going to be a day that is, it's not going to be something that, oh, well, this day is set. It's going to be just another day. It's going to be one of those days when you wake up and you're on your way to the market or you're on your way to work or you're on your way to visit your family or it's on your, you're on your way uh, uh, to, to take a vacation someplace or just take a stroll and go out and walk around. Just another day. And one of those just another days, Jesus is coming back again. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment at the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptibly and we shall be changed. It's going to happen. Paul the apostle struggled against his peers and against his people because he believed in the hereafter. He had a hope. And he has written these words, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to encourage us to also live in that hope. Let's stand and have a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us. Lord, help us to be aware and alert and watching and praying, Lord, for your return. That at any time that you might return, help us, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord, we pray. Encourage us. Help us to be lifted up, Lord, in our thoughts and in our ways. We pray for our family and our friends, our loved ones, those around about us, Lord. Watch over them, we pray. In Jesus' name. Well, I know the Lord is good. He always told me that he would. Hear bold my need and strengthen me. So I trust him, yes I do. In this pilgrim land he's true. Jesus, yes Jesus rescued me. He rescued me from troubled water. He rescued me and now I'm free. He rescued me. And I do love him. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. If you're troubled in this land and can't find a helping hand, call on Jesus, he will hear you when you call. Never fear the storm or dark, cause you're riding in God's heart. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescues all. He rescued me from troubled water. He rescued me, and now I'm free. He rescued me, and I do love him. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. Now when trouble comes my way, I call on Jesus and I say, Jesus, fill my heart and set me free. With that Holy Spirit blast from my being, fear is cast. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescues me. He rescues me from troubled waters. He rescued me, and now I'm free. He rescued me, and I do love him. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescues me. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. <coughs> A ruler once came to Jesus by night 
to ask him the way of salvation and light the master made answer in words true and plain ye must be born again ye must be born again ye must be born again i verily verily say Ye children of men, attend to the word so solemnly uttered by Jesus the Lord, and let not the message to you be in vain. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. O ye who would offer that glorious rest, and sing with the ransom the song of the blessed, the life everlasting, if ye would obtain, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, be born again. A dear one in heaven, thy heart yearns to see. At the beautiful gate may be watching for thee. Then list to the note of this solemn refrain. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again, ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Jesus is the only folks.